Hey guys, DMS here today. I have a ton of headphones in front of me and that's because I'm doing my review on this, the Topping L30. Let's check it out. All right, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven headphones in here. I've been using this amp for I'd say about two, two and a half weeks, uh, A being between it and several other amps. Uh, and I wanted to put all these headphones out here and really talk about all of them. That way I could give you guys a good idea of what is and isn't going to be powered uh, by this amplifier. So first off, I wanna talk about the build and then we'll run through the rest. So build wise, this thing is actually fantastic. Uh, this is a super, super well-built amp. Um, I can't really pull it up here too much because I actually have it plugged in, but you can kind of see it right here. You know what, let's just unplug it. I want you guys to be able to see what I'm seeing here. Okay, there we go. So this is the L30. Uh, you may have seen my unboxing video, but if you haven't, it has some simple features. We have the on switch, which makes it either a headphone amp or a pre out, you switch between those. You have three gain options for negative nine, zero and plus nine decibels. It's a single unit output. The volume knob is on the front. It's a super, super smooth potentiometer. On the back we have RCA in and out for the preamp and then it takes 15 volts AC. It's in a metal chassis. Um, got a little bit of heft to it. It's not very big. Uh, for comparison, here's the standard iPhone 11 right next to it. So it's not very large on any dimension. It's a pretty small amplifier and pretty cheap. So now I'm gonna hook it back up real quick. I love locking RCAs. I'm using these longer ones today because my DAC is way over there. I actually have the computer for this set up in the other room. Uh, so let's start off with something that I know is very hard to drive. So with the DT880 600 ohm, uh, it's producing sound. It's not producing sound at a high level. I'm not getting a lot of low frequency response out of it, and that's not the fault of the amplifier, but this amp is not necessarily going to drive this headphone as well as it should be driven. Uh, I actually have this headphone because it's so amp dependent on power rigged up to speaker taps. So <laughs> generally when I use this, I'm using this thing on a much more powerful amplifier. This can certainly produce sound with a DT8600 ohm, but you're not gonna be breaking uh, any records for SPL and you're certainly not gonna be driving it to its max potential. Um, next, I'm gonna do this one. This is a bit of an oddity. I did a review on it a while back if you wanna check it out. It's the Sony PFR V1. And yep, I did end up buying one. So this headphone is being driven relatively easily. Uh, if you really wanna get it loud, you would have to put it into high gain, but on medium gain, it's perfectly fine. That's not a headphone that I drive super hard anyway, but it's a little bit more demanding than things like the 6XXR. Uh, the next two that I put on here are gonna be really hard to power. So let's go with this one next. This is the famous Mod House Argon. This is getting decent bass response actually out of the headphone. Um, so it is giving it some juice. It's not enough for it to sound really good in the high frequencies, but it is more than listenable levels. It does start to distort once you get up to a, um, a pretty good level with the Argon. So probably not the best case for the Argon either. Let's set this one aside. I'm going through power on all these and then we're gonna talk about the sonic qualities of this amplifier. There are a few headphones that I have on the table that this can drive well. Um, the next one actually will probably be pretty easy to drive. It has been in most of my testing before. This is the Bayer Dynamic TYGR300R. I also have a video out on this. It's a headphone that I highly recommended and praised for its price and it's very easy to power. So medium gain, you give it some juice with this headphone, but this right here is an excellent pairing. Uh, because the Tiger 300R doesn't take a lot of juice, and this is an extremely, I haven't said it yet, but this is an extremely clean amplifier, um, the two pair very well together because I feel like the 300R has exceptional resolution for its price point. And when you pair these two together, it really is something special. There's a lot of headphones you won't be able to drive super well with these, but this one in particular, if you have a 300R and you're looking for an amplifier, this is certainly a good choice. I'm gonna move on to the next one here. Let's go with the Edition XX. Now the Edition XX, obviously I've listened to all these headphones with this amp before, but the Edition XX is one that I particularly remember comes to life on this amp. 
I feel like this amplifier does a really good job of unlocking the potential hidden in the Edition XX. I feel like a lot of times on most amps, this headphone does not sound particularly incredible, um, but specifically on the Topping L30, it does come to life, which is interesting. Uh, it drives it very, very easily. Overall, once again, good combination. This is not one of my favorite headphones, but it's not a bad headphone. It produces a pretty big soundstage, and these two also pair pretty well together. Two more headphones on the table, and then we are going to talk about what I think about this amp overall. Uh, this is my Dyna V2. That's a custom made one. Once again, this is a really good sounding combination. Uh, this headphone does take more power though. I'm really straining this amp to try and get uh, to a good listening level on this headphone, which is unfortunate. At moderate and low levels, it sounds really good, but the amp I don't think quite has the juice to drive this headphone though it does sound very clean in combination. We put this aside and let's go to the most universal headphone out there. And one that I have recommended countless times, the Sennheiser HD 6XX. This powers the 6XX very easily. Um, and it does a couple interesting things. So one, I'd like to point out again, this is an extremely neutral, extremely clean amp. It doesn't seem to drive low end in these as well as some other amplifiers do. I'm not entirely sure if that's because of the internal drive architecture or because of the power output of this. Um, it sounds extremely articulated in the high frequencies, very, very clean through the highs and the mid range, uh, which plays very well to the strengths of the HD6XX. And while it does produce low end, um, I find the low end on this to be less pleasing with the 6XX than with another few amps, um, specifically like the Atom, the Little Dot Mark II. Of course, Little Dot Mark II is not a clean amp by any means, it's a tube amp. Uh, but comparatively, the Atom is still a very clean amp to this, and the Atom does seem to drive all of these headphones more easily than this does. However, I feel like at low volumes, this may be cleaner sounding. So it really depends on a few things. How hard it is to drive the headphones you're using, really what other factors are going to be most important to you because this is very, very well built. It is better built on the outside at least than an Atom is. Uh, it's not made in America, so it depends on where you stand on that whole thing. It's very, 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 very low noise floor, very clean and very enjoyable with the right headphones. If you're using the Tiger 300Rs, if you're using any sort of IEMs, really, if you're using the Edition XX, uh, or if you just want a very clean, focused, mid-range and high frequency experience on the 6XX, that's very, very neutral, or the HD 600, this would be a great experience. I think this would very, very easily power things like the HD 58X. It would probably work well with things like the 4XX. I don't know if I would particularly recommend this amplifier with Sundara. I'm sure it could get there, but there are uh, factors about Sundara that make it sound just better on beefier amplifier. So for something like that, you're probably better off with um, the A90, which is a much more expensive amp, or something like the JDS Labs Atom or the JDS Labs L2 or Element 2, which I have a video on all three of those if you haven't seen it already. Uh, that's the one I posted right before this one, actually. So it's an interesting amp. The final wrapping points are that it is an amp that I can definitely recommend, but once again, it's going to be recommended to specific use cases. Uh, it's one of the cleaner amps that I've heard, but it really 100% is going to depend on what you're using it with. Are your headphones easy to drive? L30, great little amp. Do you have a headphone that's harder to drive that you listen to at low volume levels and you don't expect crazy bass performance out of it? L30, pretty great little amp. I think most uh, Audio Technicas, so anything in the AD series like the AD900X, AD1000X, uh, I think those would be relatively easy to drive on this as well. Things like the K371 and K361, M40X, uh, MDR, 1A if you're using something like the Drop Panda and want to use it wired. I think I covered a fair bit of things on there. Uh, I think this would drive headphones like Elex as well. I actually imagine this would probably be a decent combination with Elex, but Elex would probably still benefit from having uh, higher end amplifiers like the um, Element 2 or L2. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts 
on the Topping L30. This was sent to me by Hi-Fi Go. I have a link to it in the video description on their website. I've not been paid or compensated in any way to say anything in this video. Everything you're hearing is my own thoughts and opinions. But that's all I have for you guys today. If you like this video, please leave a like down below and a comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to support the channel and get early access to my videos, you can at the Patreon link in the video description, or you can get an analog shirt also linked down there that's helped make videos like these possible. If you want to get active in the community, you can at forum.hifiguides.com. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Till the next one, guys. Peace.